We have a busy day today. We're gonna be in there. Morning. Morning. First things first, today we wanna put more tin up, but we've gotta get more two by four runners up first. As complicated as it sounds, it's actually really easy. First up, we need to get the old tape measure out and measure from center of this pole, skip a pole, measure dead center of the next pole down. 16 feet. So we come over here and we grab a board. Now this could probably be the most challenging part because we've got to find one that's straight. This one literally goes four different directions. Now we got to measure out our 16 feet. Where are we right? Right there. My favorite thing about construction is these giant oversized pencils that you end up using a razor blade to sharpen instead of a pencil sharpener because they're too big to fit inside a pencil sharpener. Fun fact, they're flat like this. So if you drop it on a roof, it doesn't roll off the more you know. 16 feet. Now before we can stick our 16 foot board on the wall like this, we need to figure out the distance between here and here. So we want this to be 32 inches, so we need to measurement. We need to measurement. Wow, that was good English. We would measure 32 inches, but we're really smart. And we just made these jigs that are 32 inches long, so you just put them there like that. Then you just set the board right on top of it. You tack that in so it doesn't move. And we'll do that down there as well. Then all we gotta do is just set our two by four on there like that. And then no measuring required. It's a lot faster. Three screws on each end. Two in the middle. And three more on the end. So now we got a section of two by four runners up and we're ready to lay our tin. But before we can do that, we need to put some more of this bottom flashing on over there. Basically, we just have regular coil stock. We have this metal brake that my grandpa picked up at an auction like 40 years ago, but what it is, you stick the tin inside of there and then you can clamp it down. Then you just grab this and then it folds it. Then this new L piece of metal is the result. Then we literally just lay it down on the ground so that way it's nice and flush. Then we take these little baby white nails and we just tack it to the two by four on the back and then that's how it sits. So when we put the tin over it, it'll look like just like that. So we only see the bottom. That'll prevent anything from being able to go under there, any water, any anything else and that also looks really nice. Pardon me for my lack of ability to point because I need to hold onto the side of the building, but the top part gets something similar, but this is what's called J-channel. So we have two pieces of J-channel that butt against each other right there, but the top of the 10 will slide into the J-channel just like that so that way you can't see the top seam. So once we have our J-channel in place, then we gotta take the tape measure from right there and then we measure all the way down to the new piece we just put on the bottom. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. If our concrete was perfectly flat, which it's not, because look at the elevation change we have going on here, that we wouldn't have to measure everything. But sometimes they're 159 inches from right there all the way up to the J channel. Sometimes they're 159 and a half, 159 and three quarters. You can see right here how far that piece of tin is off the ground, but then when we go to the other end of the sheet, it's literally touching the ground right here. That's what happens when you have a floor that's not level. And if we have a problem with that, we can take that up with my grandfather when he poured this in 2005, so my... Jeez, Grandpa. We need one of these, and that is the left side, so that's the top. So whatever our 159 and whatever measurement came out to, we're just gonna mark that right here. And these are called schnips. It's what we use to cut tin with. We typically cut off about that much per piece, so about eight inches or so. We make sure the sheet slides up into the J channel on the top. We make sure that the seams line up on the bottom. Then we screw the tin to the wall. Here's the stand. six hours now. I would have liked to have got more done, I'm not gonna lie, but Grandma Judy invited us out for supper, so we're gonna take the opportunity. You don't turn down free food. <laughs> I don't want to sit by Grandma. Oh, shut up and get in. Look, I've never seen it this busy. What's going on? That's not in. Yeah. Who's left-handed? Me. Okay, you can sit with me. Hi, right, Colleen. How are you are doing? doing? Are you our waitress today? I can't see the specials. Are we getting appetizers? Look at the soup. I like your ear. You have to get a picture of all the foods that we're going to put it on Facebook and say this is what we ate. Ooh. That's right, we're putting this on Facebook. So, Grandma, what are you doing? I don't know. I, 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 couldn't, keep it, I couldn't keep it straight. Don't, hello? You didn't get on me. Oh, it did. Grandma, did you figure out if you took your sleeping pills or your diarrhea pills? I don't know. I think I took my sleeping pill. I think I took my. I think I took my. No, I didn't take my. 
I didn't take my sleeping pills yet. What? I took my heart pills. Oh, okay. That was a nice little, just a refreshing, get to spend some time with some family. And it was a good reminder that we will always have work that needs to be done, no matter what we do and how much we work. There will be always something that needs to be done. So spend some time with friends and family because you don't always have your friends and family around. You hiding in here, Dad? Hey there, Cole. Hey, Dad, where are you hiding at? Well, I took the dually. I thought I might as well run down and get the John Deere. Today they're talking a high of 50 degrees with beautiful sunshine. And tomorrow they're talking like 45 degrees with rain. So while the roads are actually somewhat dry right now, we are gonna try to wiggle out the 340 and if we can squeeze back there, the 16 row white plant. <laughs> I could have thought that battery shut off was like right here. Why am I drawing a blank here? Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Wanna see something fun when you turn the lights on? <laughs> no lights, lights. Those birds think it's the sun's in the building. The real question is this one gonna start? This one's been sitting longer. Okay, glow plugs are kicked in. We'll cycle them one more time. Oops. Fired right up. We need this thing. I don't, what do you call one of these? A portable hitch? Hitch receiver thingy? What I do know is we need to get some more three inch rock laid down over here because that's a muddy mess. The 16 row planter is typically pulled by our John Deere 4840. The 4840 is currently on Cooper's mower conditioner. So we're gonna put the mower conditioner in the north building. Bobtail, is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, we're gonna bobtail the 340 to the main heated shop. And we're gonna pull the 16 row down with this John Deere. Nice thing about the north building is it's literally right, right there. Pull forward a little bit and maybe get over this way a little more. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't work too bad for getting them out, should it? I need to put my feet down there. I need to put my feet down there. Are you gonna do the pedals? He can't see my hand back here. I got to go up front. Get you twenty dollars. Cole, move the camera. Twenty bucks. All right, I'll see if this thing will start up. Camera's right there. <laughs> I think we can just take the John Deere and back up right to the 16 row. There should be enough room behind Elmer. We're not gonna need to move the combine if that's the case. <laughs> I'm gonna shut this off before I forget. And then we actually have a dead battery. I see the difference in 30 years that makes on tractors. <laughs> Point implements like this are pretty easy to hook up because they literally just sit in that little cup thing on either side. Then you just push that handle down to flip that little locking thing in place. And that's it. And you hook up all your hoses and PTO better, pump. You better put that on there. Uh, how's that tire look? Does it look like we go? We should probably pull it by the shop to put some air in it. You mean it'll be okay to run it that far? Mm. Yeah, if we go slow. Okay, 
okay to get him down there? Huh? That was okay to get him down there at least? I think so, don't you? Kelly's doing good. Slight change of plans. We're gonna end up taking the 7140 over to the big machine shed and we're gonna hook the 340 up to the 24 row planters. So we'll have both planters down here. We decided to do that while the gravel's dry since they're talking wet, they're cold, slushy, basically for the foreseeable forecast. So we don't know when the next period of time we'll be able to get the 24 row planter down the road without getting it all muddy. And then that lowers the three point. Yep. There we go. We don't want to fully hook up all the electronics and stuff on the planter right now, just because there's a lot of stuff right there. It's all those. Our planter seeps for some reason. We've worked on it several years in a row trying to figure out what is internally leaking that causes these front wheels to just drop down onto the ground. So they've dropped down onto the ground, so I'm hoping we can just press this remote here and lift the main frame of the planter without having to hook all this stuff up. Well, they're lifting. See how that front one's seeping down right now? The roads are pretty rutted up right now. It took. 30 minutes to drive three miles. We made it pretty much mud free. I don't think we got mud on anything. Look at that. Whoa! You want me to throw this in a big old tangled mess? No. Now we can probably fit three trucks there. Got room for the skid loaders over there. It looks good. Now, the tractors, obviously this one needs wash. It's pretty rough looking. The inside's not too bad though. I think we're pretty much ready to go on the inside other than the wires need to be ran through the back from the planter, but we're not gonna do that yet because we're gonna get the tractor washed up first. We're not gonna be doing any hooking up at all. We need to get the quick attach thing for the Midland CB in here. So that way you can just grab it and it'll pull back to it. Cause right now that wraparound thing is solely there. So it doesn't smack into our in command 1200 monitor. I think Cooper was gonna try to mount some sort of thing in here for an iPad. So that way during planting season, we can watch movies while we're planting because that's what the world's come to when you have a lot of steer. <laughs> we definitely need to do an oil change in this. We'll probably end up swapping out fuel filters as well. Just while we have it inside the shop. All the other filters should be good on everything. This one has a longer service interval on like the back transmission and stuff. And we did that last year. So should be good there for the hours we put on it. One thing we like to do every year, we always pull this cover off. If you have a Magnum and you've never done this before, or this style of Magnum, pull this cover off because there's a gap like this that goes all the way around the exhaust that's in here and a bunch of chaff and stuff gets inside there it just major fire hazard i've heard a lot of people burning up these tractors because they get chaff caught up in there and don't get it cleaned out i bet there's a half a five gallon bucket full in there and if you have a magnum and you are constantly getting air filter things beeping at you saying that it's plugged dirty and you're constantly blowing this thing out two years ago we bought one of these hillco technologies that's all the information right there but it's like a turbo filter thing on the end, so it spins and somehow blows the fines out. We went all of planting season and all up to like the last three days of harvest before our blocked air filter thing came on. So that 
has made all the difference because we used to have to do that every day. And then it's just pretty much checking tire pressures and stuff. The grain cart has different rear tire pressures than the planter does, so I think we'll take a little bit of air out so that way we're a lighter footprint. The planter doesn't weigh as much as the grain cart does, especially when we have this thing in the ground. I'll have to double check my notes, but I think we only put like 12 PSI in these tires. It is something crazy low. Once again, she needs a bath. And I don't know if Cooper knows or you know. These inside lights on the back fender, whenever we turn those on, it just blows a fuse inside the cab. Just those ones. They're LEDs. We need to put like a relay in there or something. But if you know, I, that would be appreciated because it's nice to have those lights. We just have them unplugged right now. This planter got a major go through last season. We basically took everything off and replaced a whole bunch of stuff. I know we need to do some adjustments on these gauge wheels. We got some rubber on a few of them that's kind of getting a little bit bad. We'll do the normal wear and tear check, make sure stuff is straight and doesn't wiggle that's not supposed to wiggle. I don't think this planter really needs a whole lot though, which is a good thing because well, there's a lot of individual rows we have to do. John Deere's ready to go. We got our wax cleaned, oil changed. She's been fully serviced. We might need to check air pressure in the tires. They even got the auto steer system stuff already in here. Wires are looking clean. We do need to get a better place to hook this CB radio. Because right there, I mean, it's not terrible, but it'd be kind of nice if you could just grab it and it would go shoop. Gonna suck back to where it was. This tractor is only used to plant soybeans, and that's what we use the 16 row for since we have a 12 row corn head, and the 12 row corn head matches up with the 24 row planter, where it doesn't with the 16. Plus, this is kind of a basic bare bones planter from the early 1990s. No fancy technology on it like this one has. Like this one has electric drives on it that spin the meters, so electricity is what spins that. Then it has hydraulic downforce. And we run Ag Leader stuff. We also got some Yetter Shark Tooth Road Cleaners on these. These are the air adjust ones. So these are this is a little airbag. It fills up with air. Then you can adjust it by pressing buttons up in the cab on how much pressure down you want, how much pressure up you want. And it's kind of a fancy system. And it's nice because field to field, you just press buttons, change your settings. You don't, you don't even have to get out. Where these ones have a manual adjust thing up top. You got to get out individually, do every single row. It's one of those things. It, Sounds bad, but you do it the first day of planting and then you usually go the whole season like that. I don't necessarily think this planter needs a ton of stuff. I do know one thing, pretty much all the rubbers on all of these press wheels is bad. See how we kind of got some like notches out of them. Like that one there is pretty bad. And now, yeah, that one's got a bearing out of it. There's one over here that also has a bearing out, I believe. You like this planter though, don't you? Yeah, I do. I, filling wise, I always hate it because it seems like it's running over and always filling, but I like the lightness and uh, I think overall it's been doing a good job. This planter is kind of known for having a mind of its own as well, especially when it comes to folding up and that, I don't even know how to unfold it. That's something it you only know how to do. It does got a mind of its own. Last year though, it ran pretty dang good going in and out. And yeah. If the plan goes to plan, we'll probably plant about 75% of our acres with that planter. We'll do some beans with this one, all beans with that one. Once we get done with beans, then that one will do all the corn, and then this one will just get put away. So we don't really get a lot of wear put on it a year. Like last year, Dad did 300 acres with it, but it it's handy to have, and it, it sure allows us to get done faster and get started sooner. It's also nice when this one's running on beans and this one's running on beans then we're just in bean mode and then everyone's just focused on that not trying to keep corn supplied to this and then you're running back trying to keep beans supplied to that and then your mind's in two places at once you get boxes and stuff mixed up was it last year or year before we could synchronize the monitors the yes. leader monitors and we that did, was nice we did that at melvin's yeah and then when you got to an area this one planted, once this one got into it, it would shut off. This one does have clutches on it, but it's every four rows. Where are they hiding at? Right there. That little cylindrical looking thing is a clutch. So once you cross into an area that plants, that clutch tightens down and then it stops these sprockets from spinning, stops that main top shaft from moving so you don't plant. Or this one having the electric drives every single row, we have shutoffs every single row. So if you come into like a waterway or something, they just go dee 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 dee, stop planting. It's, it's pretty cool. Unless it's a case like last year where 
somehow just before planting all of our boundary maps completely disappeared oh, then we ended yeah. up planting through our waterways and then mowing them was a nightmare because the corn was like seven feet tall yeah so there we have it that's what's going on yeah.